I'm sure some of you have seen directed by Alan Smithy before on a film's credits. What if I told you he never actually existed? How can it be that a director who has more than 110 credits on his resume across a 32 year career, including his own autobiographical film, have never actually lived? Let's take a look back at the life and times of Alan Smithy. The year is 1968 and Robert Totten has spent 25 days filming Death of a Gunfighter, but his star performer Richard Widmark is unhappy with his direction so arranges to have him replaced by Don Siegel to do the last 9 days of filming. With the final cut of the film containing around 50-50 of each director's work, neither wanted to take credit for the film claiming that it was in fact Widmark who had been in charge the whole time anyway. This posed a problem for the Directors Guild of America, as up to that point in film history, they did not allow Guild members to disavow a film and use a pseudonym. For two reasons, firstly to stop producers forcing it upon rookie directors and in support of the auteur theory. That posits that a director is the main creative driving force behind a film's vision. So it was with this that Alan Smithy, the official DGA pseudonym used when a director had disavowed a film, was born. The use of Alan Smithy only had three rules attached to it. Satisfy the guild that you were unable to exercise creative control over the film, never discuss the circumstances of the use of the name, and never acknowledge really being the director of a disavowed film. His first film was actually widely praised along with his direction. As Roger Ebert said, Director Alan Smithy, a name I'm not familiar with, allows his story to unfold naturally. Smithy would never reach the highs of his first film again, it being his most well-received movie of his career, holding an 83% Rotten Tomatoes rating. Retrospectively, his first film has actually become Fade In, directed by Judd Taylor, who used a pseudonym twice during his career, requesting it be used for 1980's City in Fear also. He commented on his request at a DGA award ceremony in 2003. I had a couple of problems in my career having to do with editing and not having the contractually required number of days in the editing room that my agent couldn't resolve. So I went to the guild and I said, this is what's going on. The guild went to bat for me, I got Alan Smithy on them both, it was a signal to the industry from a creative rights point of view that the shows had been tampered with. And so it came to pass that Alan Smithy was left with a career of disowned disasters and the TV cut of David Lynch's Dune, after studios or producers had meddled with the director's vision enough for him to want to disavow it. Over the decades, the use of and purpose of the pseudonym became very well known outside of film circles, with various directors discussing their use of it, which resulted in the satirical film and Alan Smithy film, Burn Hollywood Burn, starring Eric Idle being released in 1998, in which a man named Alan Smithy wishes to disavow a film but can't as the only name he can use is his own. The director, Arthur Hiller, claimed that the producer, Joe Esterhas, had interfered with his creative vision, resulting in the pseudonym Alan Smithy being credited as director. It has long been suspected that this was a publicity stunt, although that has been strenuously denied by all involved, it didn't help the film much, it being the lowest rated film of Smithy's filmography and only grossing $45,779 at the box office. Due to the harsh negative publicity and widespread acknowledgement of the pseudonym outside the film industry, the DGA retired it in 2000, with the last official use being Kiefer Sutherland's 1999 Woman Wanted. So those were the life and times of Alan Smithy, the greatest director who never was, and if you have a suggestion for anything film related I can look into, leave a comment, like and subscribe.